If you need help finding new music, you've come to the right place because you're gonna find out right now. Hello YouTube, Bowtie Media here, and I'm gonna give you five tips, five platforms, five ways to find brand new music. And if you listen to EDM and or hip hop kind of rap, uh, these will be extra helpful for you. The first thing is actually a bonus tip, and here's what you need to know, a very, very, very important detail. Here it is. Most music comes out on Friday. Almost all new songs, new albums, new EPs, I would say 95% of the music industry comes out on a Friday. So what does that mean for you? Well, depending on your time zone and where you live, it may actually come out a little bit earlier if you really wanna be a go-getter. For example, I live in the west coast of North America, and for all of North America, or at least Canada, where I'm from, music comes out at midnight Eastern time, the 12.01 on Friday morning, but that is nine o'clock for me, so I actually can listen to songs at 9 p.m. Thursday night. All new songs, most new songs come out at that time. So you can do some tests with some of the tips I give you upcoming to know exactly when your time is. It'll be a little slightly different for everyone, but for most likely for you, it'll come out between 9 p.m. Thursday and midnight on Friday. So with that out of the way, let's get into the real tips and or platforms we're gonna be looking at here. There's gonna be something for everyone, every platform you listen to, at least the majority of people. So let's hop into number one. And the first thing we're gonna be looking at is Spotify. Spotify, Spotify, Spotify. In my opinion, I am a person that uses Spotify over Apple Music or anything else, is the best way to find new music, and that is because of a lovely feature called the Release Radar. Let's just take a little bit of setup. So here is the setup, quick and simple. There is a follow button on all artist pages, and what you wanna go do is you want to follow every artist you like. Every artist you've heard a song from, anything, you just wanna follow and follow and follow and follow. Because when it hits that midnight time for you on that Friday, that release radar will fully update and refresh with any new song that an artist that you follow comes out with will show up right there in your release radar. Actually, the last two weeks. The first top half of the playlist will be songs that came out that day or that week, and the bottom half will be songs that you did not listen to from the previous week. So as long as you're following the artist you enjoy, their song will show up here. This is such a good strategy that I would actually recommend that if you don't use Spotify, get a regular free account and follow all the people and have your release radar update for you. I honestly think of all the tips, this is the absolute best one. So the pros for using Spotify and the release radar, I think it is the best, it has the most exact songs. As long as you're following the artist, it will absolutely show up here. I also think this is the quickest and simplest way to find new music that comes out. As long as you're there on that release radar page when the stuff comes out, it is so easy. You have got two weeks of backlog all in one single playlist. You can either just hit shuffle or go through. It's so easy to use. As well, it's actually categorized by your music preference. So the top of the list of your release radar will be artists that you listen to or enjoy the most and it will slowly go down from there to artists you don't like or listen to a ton at the very bottom. So it's got every new song that came out and organizes them by which were artists Spotify thinks you will like the most. There's only two real cons I think for using Spotify and number one is fake artists. Spotify does a really bad job of doing a verification check. You can pretty much just submit a song to Spotify under any name and it'll just approve it right away so people can easily mask as another artist just to get their own song a couple plays right away. I don't think this happens too often, but enough where you need to be a little conscious of it and you're not just free going into any track here. And the other con is that it's a little harder to see larger projects. On Spotify, it will say the song name, the artist, and then where it's from. And so if it's a single, it'll just be the same name as the song. But if it's the title track of a new album or EP, you actually have to click on it to see if it's gonna be an EP or album. So I always go through and click on the where it's from, the, the album tab, and see, oh, oh, it's actually part of a larger project. So it's a little harder to see on Spotify, but doesn't take too much more time to really go through. Number two is Apple Music. How to use Apple Music. It is their Explore page. This should update just like the Spotify release radar does once a week at that Friday midnight time for you or 9 p.m. Thursday. But I don't actually use Apple Music, so take this note with a grain of salt. I try to do my best research. It doesn't seem like you can actually follow artists to get an update on this page. So unlike Spotify, you can't actually know exactly who you're gonna be listening to. It uses your listening habits to pick what will show up in your Explore page. So this is a pro for others and a con for others. I personally think it's a con that you can't pick exactly what goes on your Explore page, but it is kind of tailored to your listening habits more so than Spotify does, I guess. So some pros, unlike Spotify, you'll actually be able to find some new artists that you're not following, which I guess is sort of a con for Spotify as well, but it won't be as exact as Spotify is. And the con is just that, it's not very exact. If you wanna know exactly what is coming out from the artists you want to listen to, 
Apple Music really isn't your guy for that. Up next is tip number three, and this is specifically useful for those that listen to EDM, and that is your SoundCloud Stream tab. A SoundCloud account is free to make and super easy to set up, and just like Spotify, you wanna go and follow all the artists you listen to. Follow like artists, follow similar artists, just go follow everyone. The first big pro of a SoundCloud account is that when you go to that Stream tab, any new song that comes up by the artist at any time will show up there freshly updated. So if it comes out earlier in the week, you're gonna see it right when it comes out on that random Tuesday, unlike Spotify or Apple Music where you wanna wait for it to really come out on that Friday midnight. Obviously on Spotify and Apple Music, you can find those songs, but they won't show up in a playlist or they won't show up in a different menu for you until that deadline. So SoundCloud is really great for knowing when songs come out exactly. They're also really good at showing the larger projects. You can see very clearly if it's an album or an EP or just a single, you can see it very, very clearly. One of the biggest cons of SoundCloud is that artists can repost other songs though, and it's kind of hard to see at first glance. You can't tell if it's a new song that that artist put out or they're just reposting another song that they really liked. So you have to be a little more, I would say, aware of what you're going through. You can't just blindly scroll and see all these new songs. You kind of got to see, go, okay, no, let's repost. Oh, okay, this is a new song. And once you get over that, it's actually pretty good. But the major con of SoundCloud is that not everything is on here. Unlike Spotify and Apple Music, which are the mainstay of streaming platforms, not every song is going to be released to SoundCloud. It's pretty much an artist case by case basis where they do want to or do not want to release on SoundCloud. And you kind of just got to figure that out as you go. But a slight con is that there's actually going to be songs on SoundCloud that you won't hear on Spotify or Apple Music, particularly random remixes or bootlegs of pretty popular songs. SoundCloud is also kind of built for EDM and hip hop users. I think more so than any other genre, it's more attuned to those. And so if you really like EDM, if you really like rap, you're gonna find that a lot more artists are on this platform, they're on SoundCloud, and you're gonna hear a lot of unreleased music or bootleg remixes that you wouldn't hear on a Spotify or Apple Music. Tip number four, which is also specifically helpful for those that like EDM electronic music, is a YouTube burner account. Just like Spotify and SoundCloud, you can obviously use YouTube to just subscribe to the artists you like and see a feed just like that if you want to, but I think there's a better trick. For those genres, specifically EDM, that revolve a lot more around labels than just the artist, I actually use a YouTube burner account just to subscribe to the label accounts. So for electronic music, for example, I actually don't subscribe to Pegboy Nerds YouTube. I go and subscribe to Nerd Nation and Monster Cat and Bitbird and Disciple and Armada and Rushdown. That way I can see all the new label releases from artists that I wouldn't have even known to follow on Spotify or SoundCloud. And the reason I say I use a burner is that it can easily flood your subscription inbox. And so I would just make another account Super easy to do, just call it whatever, and then just subscribe to all the labels you like. Some labels are a little harder to keep up with so consistently because of random release schedules or this or that. So I find this is the best way to just find a blanket way to get all of the new tracks from all the labels I like. And the fifth and final tip slash platform I would say is use albumoftheyear.org. I really, really like it. There's other platforms out there like Rate Your Music, but I honestly really, really like Album of the Year. Its flow, design, and simplicity is awesome. This is one of the more unique options slash platforms in these tips because this is entirely crowdsourced for information. There are no artists that are posting their albums or EPs or songs to these websites. It is purely people that like rating and listening to the music that will put it up there themselves. I find this the best way, honestly, to find new music, find new artists I haven't listened to. And it's a really great way to also to see what other people think of projects. Because it's specifically designed around rating music, this is a great way to find which albums are album of the year contenders, what maybe sh will show up at the award shows, or just stuff that you're bypassing didn't realize were that good. Album of the year is super easy and slick to use. I personally love it. It's not too bad on mobile, but way better on desktop. And album of the year actually uses a hybrid upload dating system, unlike the other platforms do. They don't update every second like SoundCloud does, or every week like Apple Music and Spotify does, but it takes the last week of songs and takes what is most popular in that last week, those last seven days and cycles it through the main page. But if you don't want that, you can easily go hit new releases and or upcoming releases to see what is coming or just had been out. So those are my five tips and five new ways that you could find music today. If you found this useful, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.